What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Friday, July 19th, 2024, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now it is 1701 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in today. We have a global IT outage caused by the cybersecurity company CrowdStrike who released a faulty Microsoft patch last night and it caused all kinds of problems for Microsoft machines worldwide. And for those of you guys who are not aware, most medium to large companies, even small companies, use Microsoft. It's the most popular operating system and software for businesses, including Office 365. And so because of this faulty patch, all Microsoft machines, including Windows and Office 365 configured machines are not functioning. And as of right now, we're hearing that there is a worldwide disruption of flights, railroads, banks, media outlets, and healthcare companies, just to name a few. There's also people complaining of issues at point of sale terminals. So people are having difficulties checking out at supermarkets and at gas stations. And we're hearing that there's still escalating disruptions. Even after the CrowdStrike CEO said this morning that they were actively working to fix the situation. So big cities and countries all around the world, including Washington, D.C., have suspended their train services. Numerous stock exchanges have reported having issues today. And major airlines around the world, including American Airlines, Delta, and United, have grounded all their flights. We're hearing of 911 outages here in the United States in multiple states. The CrowdStrike CEO said that this was not a cyber attack and that a fix has been deployed. But where is that fix? Okay, things are still not working. Okay, a lot of people are not able to get their prescription medication. There's a lot of issues with healthcare companies, including hospitals, doctors, etc. We're hearing that over 4,000 flights have now been canceled. And the Washington Post is reporting that the outage could mean delays for package delivery in parts of the U.S. And what's interesting about this IT outage is that it literally came right after Trump's big speech at the RNC last night. He had the longest nomination speech in U.S. history. It lasted 92 minutes. And of course, all of this happening literally five days after Trump, or actually six days after Trump was almost assassinated. And I do have a source on the ground in Butler, Pennsylvania, who works right across the road from the Butler Farm Show complex where Trump was almost assassinated. And my source has told me that law enforcement has already pretty much wrapped up their investigation at the Butler Farm Show Complex, which to me is a little bit unusual that they would only be there for six days. And they've apparently already reopened the Farm Show Complex. So I'm going to try to make a trip down there soon to do an on-the-ground investigation. Before I continue with the breaking news, I want to ask you guys to say a quick prayer for Nicolette, Nicolette and her son. She's a subscriber of mine, and she left me this comment. Greg, can you ask your viewers to pray for my son and myself? My son was in a terrible car accident a few months ago that left him facially disfigured, and it was the other driver's fault. He is really struggling because he's young. I could use a prayer as well as I'm struggling watching him struggle. So please pray for Nicolette and her son. We also have major breaking news that the U.S. Embassy or consulate in Tel Aviv in Israel came under attack last night by Houthi drones. 
This drone came in from the Mediterranean Sea and flew directly over the American consulate or embassy on the beachfront of Tel Aviv and crashed into a building about 100 meters away. No deaths or injuries were reported at the embassy compound, according to the U.S. State Department. However, one Israeli man, a civilian, was killed and also four Israelis were injured. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply is doing a discount on their one month emergency food supply. And to get the deal, you got to go to preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. This is a one month freeze dried food supply, it has a 25 year shelf life. Normal price is $237. They've dropped it down to $177. So that's a savings of $60. And it's all packed within two rugged water-resistant buckets. Free shipping is included. $177 for one month of food. Where are you going to find a deal like that? They also have a general store, and they're always running discounts in their general store on various prepping and survival items. They have everything from MREs, potassium iodide to survival seeds. And to get to their general store, you got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo at the top of the page when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com. And you'll see when you get there, they have everything you can imagine. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $60 off the My Patriot Supply one month emergency food supply. That's $180 for one month of food, free shipping included. The link is in the description below this video. And also check out their general store. They have everything you can imagine, prepping and survival related, and they're always running various discounts there. And the Houthis have claimed responsibility for this attack saying that they used a new and advanced aerial attack drone which has the ability to bypass the Israeli air defense array. The drone is claimed to have been specifically designed for long-range flight to target the city of Tel Aviv, which is why the drone is named Jaffa, which is an old city that used to stand on the ground of Tel Aviv. The Houthis further stated, that the drone is operational. The city of Tel Aviv will be a major target for other upcoming attacks with these long-range drones. And the attack on Tel Aviv is being reported to have been larger than just a single drone, according to Al Arabia, citing Saudi security officials who said that a ballistic missile and a group of three drones were launched by the Houthis and then shot down last night over the Red Sea by the U.S. Navy. So the drone that almost hit our embassy in Tel Aviv was one of four drones. Three of the four were shot down, okay? And the one made it through and hit its target almost. And after this incident, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, postponed his trip to Washington, D.C., so he was going to go to D.C. to meet with Congress and Biden, and to give a speech to Congress, but he canceled that. So to me, that's a huge sign that Israel is about to go into Lebanon. Earlier this week, the Defense Minister of Israel, Yoav Gallant, said that Israel can start their campaign against Hezbollah any day they want, and they already shared battle plans with the U.S. Military Central Command Commander Kirilla, so the Israeli military has already completed battle plans for Lebanon, and they've already shared the battle plans with the U.S. military, with Central Command. Okay, now we also have U.S. nuclear forces on high alert this afternoon. I've been streaming live since about noon today, and we've heard probably over 35 nuclear attack options broadcasted in the last five hours, which is very unusual. So far today, we've had four nuclear war command and control planes up in the air. We also had a presidential doomsday plane up in the air. We also have a lot of sub hunters and coast guard planes off the coast of Florida again, and off the coast of Cuba, 
which means there could be Russian subs off the coast of Florida somewhere or near Cuba. We also have a lot of unusual reconnaissance activity by the U.S. Army and the Coast Guard off the coast of Venezuela, which the Russian warships that were in Cuba ended up going to Venezuela after. So something's brewing, guys. We've had a lot of nuclear attack options broadcasted so far this afternoon. I'm going to stay live the rest of the day and the rest of the night to monitor this situation. We could potentially have something serious happening any hour now. It looks like this weekend something huge could happen, okay? And Biden is apparently staying in the race for the White House, his campaign chair said today, despite mounting pressure from Democrat allies to step aside. This comes after rumors surfaced that he would announce that he was quitting this weekend, and Biden supposedly had COVID-19 and went to Delaware. He's at his house in Delaware for the next couple of days recovering from COVID. I don't think that's true. I think that he just needs time to think about his next move. But his campaign chair is saying that he is absolutely staying in the race and we also have some major breaking news coming in from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Apparently 5,000 Ukrainian workers have been evacuated from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. That's the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. It has six nuclear reactors. 5,000 Ukrainians were evacuated, which is just absolutely insane. So I don't know if this means that Russia is about to blow up the whole power plant or maybe they want more control over it. I have no idea, but this is extremely unusual. This is being reported by the Kyiv Independent. Around 5,000 workers were rescued from the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Energy Minister Herman Holoshenko said on July 19th during a press conference, all evacuated employees were the workers of Ukraine's energy agency Energatom, according to Holoshenko. So these are all Ukrainian workers at the power plant. So now Russia is basically going to have total control over the power plant. We know that Russia has rigged this power plant to blow. They've put explosives all around the facility and in one of the turbine halls. They're still not allowing the UN inspectors to get into one of the turbine halls. So this could mean that Russia is getting ready to blow this thing and they're going to blame it on Ukraine. This is going to create a zone of radiation that's going to block Ukraine from being able to get to Crimea. So this is absolutely insane. Let me just share some footage from this IT outage. This was on Sky News. One of the reporters on Sky News earlier this morning was showing all of the screens at his studio not working. ...story in Australia and right around the world, but we can't bring it to you in the normal way. Why? It's affecting us at Sky News, at Foxtel, many customers, many users, many businesses. What's happened is we believe a malware company called CrowdStrike has essentially gone down. If we have a look at our studio here, this is what it looks like on many computers right around the world. Now, um, technical operators call this the BSOD, the BSOD, the blue screen of death. People are loading, systems are crashing, they're loading again and again and again. It's on a loop. So many companies are unable to work right now, including Sky News. Now, it's affecting users in Australia. We're talking major banks, telcos, media companies, uh, Sky News, obviously. ABC Radio was completely down last time we saw it as well. But it's right around the world. This is an international company. We can see here what it's doing as well to our screens. Uh, we're talking, we've seen users in the US, in Europe, in Asia, New Zealand, right around the world this is happening. So this will be a massive story. There are offices everywhere that have just gone completely down, people unable to work, there'll be payment systems not working, uh, and all sorts of issues, including for telcos. Remember that last outage for Optus and all the, the issues caused there? So this is massive. As I said, we believe the company is CrowdStrike, that's the belief at the moment. The last contact we had, had by the way, with the minister's office was that uh, the belief was it was going to be CrowdStrike involved and they were working to fix their systems, but it's up to them to do it. So the stress on that is it's not a, a hack, if you like, where the government has to try to ward it off. It's a systems issue within CrowdStrike when an update happens. So once that update has been pushed through across the world, 
as soon as that update happened, companies are just going down, including here at Sky News. You can see this is the situation right now in the studio. We're hoping this issue, why we believe CrowdStrike will get fixed so that we can get back on air and tell you what's going on. And obviously we're hoping it's not disrupting your lives too much as well. So, so basically this was a faulty patch. CrowdStrike is a cybersecurity company and an IT company. They provide security and IT services to all major companies around the world. And this was a faulty patch, basically, but that's the official story. What if it had malware in it? What if somehow maybe the Russians were able to insert malware into this patch? So when CrowdStrike pushed the patch out, they actually installed malware. So very concerning. What I would do if I were you guys... Number one, if your computers are already on, don't turn them off, okay? Keep your computers on because when you shut your computer down and then try to restart it, it's going to force an update and you're going to get that faulty patch and your computer's going to get messed up, okay? So keep your devices charged up. Don't restart any devices. Don't power down. Keep them powered on. Keep them plugged in and just use the hibernate feature okay put your computer on hibernate so it's basically still on but it's using it's basically like it's off essentially okay so this way your computer doesn't fail and in addition to this i'm very concerned about bank runs on monday if they don't get this fixed over the weekend we could see massive bank runs because there were people complaining that they can't take money out of their bank account a lot of uh internet banking has gone down so people may try to pull a lot of money out of the banks in preparation for the whole system to go down. The whole internet banking system could go down and people are going to start pulling their money out. So I'm very concerned about that. I'm very concerned about panicking people running to the stores and buying everything, filling up their gas tanks and stuff like that. Um, so get ahead of the crowds and stockpile everything you need now. Make sure your bug out bag is packed and ready to go. Make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan because something is brewing, especially with all these nuclear forces in the air today. We also have some very concerning news coming out of Sweden. The Swedish Minister of Civil Defense said that the Swedish government has decided to begin planning for large-scale evacuation and accommodation in the event of an armed attack. He wrote this on the social media platform X, also known as Twitter. He wrote also the following, Protection of the civilian population is a central task for civil defense in the event of war, not only to save civilian casualties, but also because the task is fundamental to maintaining resilience and the will to defend. The war in Ukraine has clearly shown us how access to protected spaces is central in being able to maintain normalcy as far as possible in parts of the country that are sporadically affected by Russian remote combat. He's talking about drones. This in turn contributes to maintaining the resilience and capacity of civil society. Large-scale evacuation was also important in the initial stages of the war in order to simultaneously focus defense efforts and maximize civilian life. Sweden is safer as a NATO member, but the security policy situation is the most serious since the end of the Second World War. The planning that is now underway has not been carried out since the end of the Cold War. There is no immediate threat of war against Sweden, but this type of planning must be done to improve our ability to face an even more difficult situation. The assignment is given to all county administrative boards and MSB. I'm not sure what that means. The mission includes mapping which areas could be likely targets in the event of an armed attack. The armed forces must assist in the work of developing such prioritization. Based on this geographical prioritization, the authorities must identify which protective measures are suitable for a certain area. The work must be regarded as an overarching system for the protection of the civilian population, where access to shelters, evacuation, and accommodation are different components. This means that areas that are less likely or accessible targets for an armed attack may be designated as areas for accommodation with additional planning as a result. 
As with most things, you can argue that this should have been done earlier, but as you know, the next best option is always to take things and do it now instead of not addressing the problem. With this, the government addresses another issue that has been left unhandled since the closure of the old total defense. So very interesting, guys. Sweden is going to be uh, preparing their civil defense, okay, for large-scale evacuation of civilians, okay, from populated areas, from areas that could be targeted. Absolutely insane. And the U.S. Secret Service has confirmed that Trump was injured by a bullet and not by glass, as reported by some sources in the initial hours and days after the assassination attempt. They said that the bullets hit his teleprompter and he was hit by fragments, but he was actually hit by a bullet. I mean, just think about how crazy that is, guys. He was literally an inch from death, okay? The bullet hit the outside of his ear, okay? He was literally an inch from death. So, I mean, that is just absolutely crazy to think about. And we're also hearing that the building where Trump shot from was apparently sold four months before the shooting. So, isn't that interesting, guys? Remember 9-11? When they started taking out insurance like a few months before 9-11 on the Twin Towers, the uh, insurance companies, and then also the gold was removed from the basement of the World Trade Center a few months before. Okay, so now we have this news that apparently four months before the shooting, the building was sold. I mean, that is just really bizarre, guys. And cops apparently radioed a tactical radio channel about the shooter after the local cop had the initial rooftop confrontation with the shooter when he was climbing up the ladder, yet nothing was done, okay? And Thomas Matthew Crooks was apparently spotted on the roof by law enforcement almost 30 minutes before the shooting, According to the local WPXI, Crooks was spotted at least twice by members of the Beaver County Emergency Services Unit team approximately 26 minutes before he fired shots at the former president and the crowd at the Pennsylvania rally. According to sources quoted by the WPXI network, police officers detected the presence of a suspicious man on the roof took a picture of him and reported him at around 1745. So that's about 30 minutes before the actual shooting. Okay, so that is very, very strange. Okay, 30 minutes before the shooting, they actually saw him. They were using the tactical radio channel and yet nothing was done. Want to show you guys some footage here from around the world. This is at LAX. People are at the airport here and all of the screens at the airport are just blue. Check this out. You know, so they're saying that this was a faulty patch, but what if this was a global cyber attack and they're calling it a faulty patch to prevent panic? You know, we know that the government is willing to lie and they've done so a lot in the past. So I don't know if I believe that this was a faulty patch. And here we have a screenshot of some of the initial headlines late last night or early this morning saying United Delta and American Airlines issued global ground stop on all flights. Absolutely historic, guys. This is the largest global IT outage ever. This is historic, okay? Never has anything like this happened before. Here we have an airport in India. I forget exactly where this was, but you can see some of the uh, screens here are uh, off. Here we have uh, Sky News uh, saying that they're having an interruption with their broadcast. And the Associated Press put out an alert earlier this morning saying that they're going to have a service disruption. I mean, just absolutely insane. Here's the flight path of that drone that tried to attack the U.S. consulate. It flew right over the consulate and hit a building 100 meters behind the consulate, okay? Literally the next intersection behind the consulate, okay? Absolutely insane. 
And here we have some video footage of the aftermath after the drone hit whatever building it was that it hit. You can see the Israeli fire department here, the Israeli fire trucks. Okay, so absolutely crazy situation. Very interesting situation last night. We had a B-52 nuclear bomber fly up to Cold Lake base in canada now if you're not aware of what cold lake is that's where the canadian military has one of their most important f-18 wings and the f-18 wing in cold lake is responsible for intercepting incoming russian cruise missiles and bombers during a nuclear war and all of a sudden we're sending b-52s up there now that is very concerning and this is probably the first time i've ever seen that before before and also an aerial refueler accompanied the b-52 up to cold lake okay so this is very very concerning it looks like the u.s is positioning nuclear capable assets in canada at one of Canada's most important nuclear war bases okay Cold Lake is part of NORAD Canada is part of NORAD and the F-18 wing at Cold Lake works directly with NORAD HQ in Colorado Springs for intercepting various types of projectiles and anomalies over North America okay and this was earlier this afternoon you can see four nuclear war command and control planes airborne one was looping over minneapolis one was out in the pacific one was out in the gulf then we had one over oklahoma and then we had the presidential doomsday plane go from Offutt air base to wright patterson which is like the area 51 of the eastern u.s and it actually turned its tracker off for a short period of time so that's pretty weird and here's another screenshot of that B-52 that went all the way up to Cold Lake. It took off from Barksdale, went all the way up to Cold Lake. And then there was another B-52 that was looping over the Adirondacks. So our nuclear forces are on high alert. Here we have a screenshot showing all the sub-hunting activity around Florida. Earlier this afternoon, you can see two P-8 Poseidons off the coast of Port St. Lucie and Melbourne, Florida. And this is exactly the same area where the Russian subs transited through on their way to Cuba a month ago. We also had several Coast Guard Ocean Sentry planes active around the Bahamas at the same time. And then there was also this Coast Guard plane off the coast of Havana flying really low off the coast of Havana. Okay, and then here we have a bunch of U.S. reconnaissance activity off the coast of Venezuela. Here we have a U.S. Air Force aerial refueler. Here we have a aeronautical systems group plane that was doing a search grid or recon pattern here. Okay, and then here we have a U.S. Army Huron, which is a small recon plane flying off the coast of Venezuela. We also had this AWACS plane looping off the coast of the Outer Banks and Virginia Beach this afternoon. We also have a U.S. Navy P-8 Poseidon patrolling off the coast of Poland right now and Kaliningrad. We've seen a lot of reconnaissance over Poland the last few days. There were several AWACS planes over central Poland the last few days, which is very unusual. Normally, the AWACS planes fly towards the Ukraine border when there's airstrikes imminent. But these AWACS planes were looping over central Poland this week, which is very weird. Here you can see a Swedish recon plane patrolling the Polish border with Belarus and Russia. And you can also see this Polish border guard plane patrolling Poland's Baltic coast. Now Poland has started building the largest fortification since World War II. They're going to be building a massive defense line along their border with belarus as wide as 50 kilometers in some areas they're going to have anti-tank trenches anti-tank obstacles they're going to have minefields they're going to mine all the bridges and overpasses up to 50 kilometers from the border with belarus in case they have to remotely detonate them if there's an invasion to slow down the invaders 
They're going to pre-position ammunition stocks. They're going to build bunkers for civilians. And they're also going to build fighting positions and trenches for fighting for the Polish military. Now, Poland is going to be tripling their force on their border with Belarus. They currently have 15,000 troops. They're going to increase that to 45,000 troops deployed along their eastern border, which is absolutely massive. Poland is spending the most on their defense of any country in Europe right now. 4% of their GDP is going towards their military. We also had a sub-hunter off the coast of Norway earlier this morning, and then we had another U.S. Air Force reconnaissance drone over Poland, Forte 14. But that's the latest breaking news that I have. Join me on the live stream I'm going to be live the rest of the day and the rest of the night monitoring these nuclear forces here in the U.S. that are on high alert. Over 35 emergency action messages already, guys, so we could have another culinary night sometime tonight or over the weekend. It looks like something is about to go down, but a lot of stuff has happened in the last week, guys, okay? So things are only going to get worse, okay? Looks like Israel's about to go into Lebanon. It also appears that Russia's about to make a big move. North Korea's about to make a big move. China's about to make a big move. Okay, remember Putin made his rounds a month ago. He went to China. He went to North Korea. He signed a mutual defense pact with North Korea. So get prepared, guys. Things are really spiraling out of things are really spiraling out of control. But I'll see you guys on the live stream. I will be live, like I said, the rest of the evening. So until the next update, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.